So let's let's talk about uh, your gear, your old until the present gear. Uh, uh, did you still remember what 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 is your first bass that you bought for yourself? Well, the first real bass I had, my dad bought me a Gibson Grabber, mm. and I had that bass up until about five years ago. So I had that bass forever. I took the frets out. I did all <laughs> kinds of stuff to this bass. Um, Then the first bass I really brought myself was, I'm trying to see if it's around here. Um, I brought a Guild Pilot bass, a four mm-hmm. string. And that was a great bass. Um, it had EMGs. It came from, it was a USA made. It had EMGs, um, just a nice, I still have it, you know, and yeah. it was a really good bass, really lightweight, it had that kind of 90s sound. You know, like, well, actually 80s when I bought that bass, but the real high end, you know, but it was my first real bass. Mm-hmm. And then a few years later, then later I found a five string version of the same bass. And mm-hmm. that was my main bass for many years. Okay. And then the next instrument I got after that was a moon five string. <laughs> moon. Okay. That must be expensive. Yeah, huh? I had, I had a moon um, five string. Then I got my first custom bass. Then, and then along the line, I also had like a 78, a 79 Fender Jazz bass, a Music Man. I had a, you know, it, it, but then, you know, when I got my first custom bass, uh, it was made by a guy named Jerry Loy here in Chicago, who's the guy who does most of my tech work. Mm. So we built the bass because I, I went to Federa. And this is in 1996. I was in New York doing a gig and I had heard about Federa. So I went to the, you know, I went to meet Joey and Vinny and I specced out a bass. And in 1996, the bass was $5,000. Wow. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it was $5,000 in 1996. And I came back and I was telling uh, Jerry Loy, who's the guy who built my bass, uh, about the instrument. And we basically sat down and figured out the specs, tweaked a few things, and he built me, it took him about a year, but he built me my first custom bass. And th- it has, it's a combination of like some of the Federa specs with the Moon specs. Wow. Um, and I actually, I still have that bass. So um yeah you know so that and then a couple of other customs and then um then in 2014 2015 i got introduced to the people at sire yeah and so we we have a bunch of those now <laughs> okay before we go to sire thing because it's gonna be long about sire you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, is there any base that you regret selling at that time uh two One was a Ernie, a pre-Ernie Ball music man mm-hmm. that I only had for a few weeks. I traded it for a speaker cabinet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and, and actually my Gibson grabber, I, I wish I had hung on to that, okay. but I had to move. Okay. If there is a chance you could buy them back, will you do it? Uh, I would probably get the Gibson back. Mm-hmm. I would probably get the Gibson back. Uh, I actually am thinking about buying a, a Music Man, you know, okay. just to have. A, I like the sound, so I need it for like session stuff. So yeah. it'd be nice to have a Music Man just okay. to have that sound. Because I have everything else. I just don't have that. <laughs> okay, now let's just uh, move into an interesting part uh, for me also, for you, I think. It's about Sire. How did you... Mm-hmm. Uh, Uh, how did you know about the Sire guys in the first place? And then the, the evolution um, of the Sire in 2015, I know that because I bought my first Sire bases, like I think in May, 2015, because I saw okay. Marcus Miller introduce the base in his right. Facebook and YouTube. But then I read some stories that it was, it was evolving in Chicago music air scene, right? I, well, this is how I, I ended up. Uh, with a sire. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't go to the NAM show that year. I mm-hmm. was going to go and then I didn't go. Uh, my very, very good friend, uh, Mr. Jocko 3X, who you know of, or you might know, Jocko went to the show and he called me 
and he was like, hey, I got something I want you to check out. Um, I just want to get your opinion on. So I, he, I go to, we meet up and he hands me, um, which was probably a prototype at the time, uh-huh. uh, prototype five string with, and it said Marcus Miller on the headstock. Yeah. So I played it and, you know, he was like, without me telling you anything about it, play this bass and tell me what you think. I, I played the bass. I looked it over. I played it again. Like, hmm, this is interesting. I, I noticed that it was made in Indonesia. Yeah. So he he said, well, how much do you think this bass should cost? Or what does it cost? And I said, well, it's probably about 15 to 1800. <laughs> and the quality of the instrument, I was like, it should be like if it was U.S. made. Yeah. It'd probably yeah. be over two. But because it's made in Indonesia, it's probably around, you know, 15, you know, 15 to 1800. And then he tells me the base cost, it's going to be $599. I was like, yeah. never, never. <laughs> and, and I was just like, this is ridiculous. What are you talking about? You know, yeah. it, it can't be. Yeah. And yeah. he was like, no, that's how much it is. So I was like, wow, I want one. You know, like, and so <laughs> he connected me with Mickey Cho. Okay. And Mickey and I spoke on the phone and Mickey was asking me a lot of <laughs> questions. So Mickey and I, just had really great conversations. And he was asking me a lot of ideas about marketing and this and that. Mm -hmm. And then eventually he just was like, well, I'm going to send you this base. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and so I have actually, uh, it's sitting right over, you can't see it, but uh, it's number 185. So okay. one of the okay. first 185. Um, and I got that in March of 2015. So a little okay. bit before they went on the market. Okay, and it pretty much, I, I it, ironically, I had had a base that had gotten stolen. One of my custom bases got stolen, mm -hmm. and it just replaced that. And I've been with Sire ever since. Great relationship, great people. Was, was that Ash or Alder V7? It is a, a Ash with a maple fingerboard. Okay, yeah, it's nice. So now I saw you have like the last one I saw you have M7 six string yeah. and then you know P P10 I think you have the P10 I have a V10 V I have a V10 okay a yeah. V10 oh uh Vuyani Wakaba has the P10 yeah yeah he has the P10 and what do you think about now now because you know Sire started from like affordable price you know Mm -hmm. like 600 almost 600 but now they have the highest line like in p10 and v10 and then you know i also sell the sire bases here in indonesia and jakarta so okay. some of my customers now starting oh no i won't buy sire when it it has 1500 you know us dollars well, price on that what do you think about that well my my thing is this um if we were talking if we were talking about cars mm -hmm. you have let's say mercedes vans yeah you have s series you have c series you have you know the uh, maybach you have you know all of these different levels of car that have various options with sire the v series the v10s are maybe the upper end of the line, but they still make all everything else that they've ever made. Mm -hmm. And so there you you have a bunch of options. Of course, if you want the 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 latest technology or whatever they're you know considering the best, then that's the upper level. But all of the other instruments, the V series, the vintage V, the V3, all of these bases still exist. Yeah. So you have a lot sense. of different choices. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of choices. It's just, yeah. you know, what can you afford? What do you want to put money into? Uh, the latest news is that, you know, some bunch of people uh, start reviewing sires, you know, sire bases. Back then in 2015, I got my first sire V7 Ash Maple, the white one. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's a uh, interesting story because, you know, uh, it's made in Indonesia. And for right. me, at 
those times when instrument is made in Indonesia, let's say five string or something like that, it, I was always worried about the low B. Mm-hmm. You know, the best thing, the best bass that I've ever had is just carving SB 5K. SB, okay. okay, the carving made in the US and then low B is nice. But then mm-hmm. I didn't dare to buy the five string version of Sire because I'm a, I was afraid that the low B didn't hit, you know, didn't have the, that right. thickness. So I bought... Right. V7 four string and I was surprised very surprised by the quality and the sound but uh although there is uh, one uh uh problem the, the the bridge pickup was was dead because you know mm-hmm. the the soldier soldier thing yeah. you know the the, yeah. the cable is, is off yeah but, but then yeah. it's it's a minor problem because I contact right. Mikey Mikey still still do is still uh, uh do, do the 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 email you know right right for the international sales <laughs> and then i i sent the, as i sent him the the email and then i asked him okay just return the base and then we will take care of it now that that's uh the first uh professional and very friendly customer service that i've ever had in buying bases oh that's, yeah the customer service is great yeah so that that made me stay with sire until now because you know some instruments i know every Each instrument in each brand, although you know, with the custom made, with the mm-hmm. high end boutique brands, there's still always a problem, whatsoever. It, exactly. Right? I've, I've, I've seen Federas that are dead. <laughs> I've, I've seen custom instruments. Um, I won't say the brand. Yeah. But a friend of mine had a uh, custom instrument that cost him a lot of money. Yep. Like four or five thousand dollars. He gets the base and it's dead on arrival. Oh my. He takes it. To, he takes it to my tech, and I happened to be at the shop that day. And my tech was like, "Let me show you this." And it was completely wired wrong. Oh God. And five. and he fixed it. You know, he fixed it, but he was like, "Yeah, you know, this base costs." He, <laughs> he, you know, he, he's a funny guy. Because he, he's always like, well, what are these bases? Co-? Like, how much does this base cost? And I was like, I don't know. He paid like $5,000 for it. And he was just like, just because you're good at carving wood doesn't mean that you're good at um, necessarily being good at um, wiring. All, it's, it's a lot to make a base. It's a lot to make it work right. So, you know, sires are made in a factory. Yeah. Uh, with any factory, they're made by people. You know, mm-hmm. this not there are machines involved, but it's mostly by people. So, out of the but the thing I always uh, are you familiar with Star Trek? I don't know if they have Star Trek in the uh, Philippines, uh, Indonesia, Indonesia. I'm sorry. Um, the Borg, they're all alike. That's what I call the uh, sires because every sire I have, the quality control is very close. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had a couple of minor problems, like you mentioned. Yeah, there's some minor stuff that has has popped up through the years, but the majority <laughs> of instruments I have, they're all from fire. They're all the same. well. And it's still it's still acceptable in that price than in 5K price, right? <laughs> right. But but I think that they changed the game. You know, they they are the je- game changers, and yeah. the revolution. The idea of the revolution is the, to raise the quality and, and the expectation. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that that's one of the reasons that we see a lot of people who are against Sire. Yeah, uh, they, they're always. Like they, yeah, like any little problem, they go crazy. Yeah. I'm like there's a whole industry <laughs> built a, about fixing fenders and other types of bases. That's why we have pickups and tuners yeah. and bridges. But it's something about Sire that makes people mad. And it's, it's funny to <laughs> They get angry. How dare you? You know, this but the the tune I, I was on the internet and a guy was talking about fret sprout. Now you're a dealer, you know that that's common. Yeah. Not I, unusual. I didn't find one, to be honest. I didn't find one. And, I, and I've never had it happen. <coughs> but um yeah, you know, he, he was mad and Why is this bass? You know, this is junk and da, da, da. And I'm like, <laughs> I have a bass here that costs 
four thousand dollars, or about almost four grand, and it had the same thing. Yeah. So you, it's it's part of dealing with wood. Yeah. But, but I think it personally, I think it's it, it's people's ego. They spent a lot of money, and here's this base that costs a lot less. It sounds and feels really good. And they might be questioning their decision. And I'm just like, just buy one. You know, I know a lot of bass players who have sires, okay. but they won't admit it publicly. <laughs> they, they have them. I've seen them. They contact me. They have them. They just won't mention it publicly. And why don't you they? Know? It's funny, you know. Well, they, they want to, they're associated with another brand. Oh, okay. Or they like to keep an image you know yeah image okay it's funny though yeah. yeah because you know marcus miller is is on the is on the headstock you know we know right. who, who doesn't know marcus miller you know right. it's funny it, that that's what i always say it's like who marcus is, is pretty much at the top of the food chain yeah with a lot of stuff and, and when you look at his career yeah all the things he does and, and marcus has dozens of bases yeah you know um Here in Chicago, there's a guy named Doug Epting, who was Marcus's backline tech for many years. Mm -hmm. So he worked, he traveled with Marcus, he took care, and he told me he has bases you wouldn't believe. Like, you know, like wow. just because you know, people just give him bass. You know, think of all the people who just given him instruments yeah. and instruments he's collected and things like that. But he plays his sires on stage, you know, yeah. along with the film. But he yeah. plays the sires too. So Must yeah. be good. It's good yeah. enough for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why. That's the fact. You know, I even had, uh, you know, the, the the Canadian company, the F Base. Yes. Yeah, I've I've had some of uh, their bases. I used to have the VF5 version, the 70s Jazz. So, you okay. know, it, it yeah, cost around. The used one is uh, pretty expensive for us Indonesian. I don't know for Americans. Really? It's around 2K. You know, two to yeah. is the used one. And then, Not more than that, yeah. yeah, I bought that one, and then Sire came out, and then you know I tried the V7, and then after that, after trying V7 and owning some, it, it, it there is a you know like a unnecessary thing for for you to get a, uh, an expensive jazz or a boutique jazz, because you know all the jazz sounds should sound like a jazz bass, you know, right? M might be like the shape, different shape or different you know electronics, right. but jazz is a jazz. So why 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 you should spend more bucks for <laughs> for a jazz sound, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I I when I first got my um, first V7, I was traveling. You know, I travel a lot, and people would ask me. They were like, "Is that Sadowski? <laughs> like, you know, or is that a performance? Or is that like Perform they hear the bass before they can see it?" And then finally, when you know, and I'm telling people about it, and I'm letting them check it out, and when I would tell them how much. Cost. They were like, "What?" And and I've had people question me. They're like, "You're not playing those cheap basses for real," or they think that my uh, sires are, are modified, and none of them are. I've never modified a sire. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've never changed anything. Nothing. Not at this point. It sounds as good as it's original. Exactly. You know, it, it it has a lot to do with who's playing it, I guess. Yeah, you know, that's yeah, what I'll, yeah. You can spend so, all so, the money. <laughs> yeah, so the yeah the fact is V 7 you know changes the game of the jazz realm in the world. <laughs> yeah. And so and, and if you've noticed, a lot of other manufacturers have come out with lower priced versions in mm. response. Mm. You know, Sadowski has come out with an import line. Yeah, the China. Uh, Chinese made, Chinese made. Uh, Court, of course, has always had lower price, yeah. but now they I've noticed that they have instruments that have a better quality to them, but they're they're not that expensive. But now, know, so, but, but now Court starts making with a roasted neck, and it's pretty pretty much pretty good too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, it, it, it. I think that at a certain point, it becomes what. The profit margin versus the quality. Yeah. So if you want good quality, then 
you might have to give up some of your um, profit margin, but a lot of times it's just quality control. Yeah. Better material, you know, so things like roasted necks, uh, things like, um, what's the machine? Uh, what, is, what is the machine that you, uh, that uh, Base Mods uses? Uh, Plec. Plec, the yeah. Plec, Plec machine. Yeah, you know, a lot of it is just <laughs> doing that. You know, so so it's it's interesting. It's a good time. I mean, it's not as far as work. It's not that great right now. But if I was just starting out as a bass player, it's a good time to be starting out. You know what? Uh, speaking of bass mods, I I even tried. You know, ordered one uh, Morris Fitzgerald signature bass mods, mm -hmm. and it's shipped from uh, USA to Indonesia. And then I tried that. It's 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 just a big uh, wider for my hands because it's 19 millimeter. Yeah. It's not like higher 18. Yeah. 18 is perfect for me for my hands. Mm -hmm. I have a smaller hands. But then I I sold that before uh, to get my Nathanese the Yamaha. But then oh, okay. uh, yeah. But then uh, yeah, that's the fact. Now I don't I don't think I need you know to buy a more expensive jazz kind of bass as long as I have my V series in my hands. Look like. like well, I you know, you know the V3 is already killing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where, um, like you said, at a certain point, a jazz is a jazz. A jazz is a jazz, yeah. You, you can make it active. Like one, one of my favorite sires is my vintage V7 uh, five string. Mm -hmm. And the reason I like it is because it feels and sounds like <laughs> a 70s jazz bass with active electronics and a low B. Yeah. That's that's what I like. I love that. Yeah. You know, for that sound, I use that, I take it to every session I do, anytime that I get, I do a lot of remote recording now. And that's the first bass I'll try. And a lot of times that's it, you know, and I have 14, 15 basses here. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, 14, 14. <clears throat> Well, I have, I have 13 electric bases and two uprights. And, you know, I can I know I can play that bass and it's just going to sound good. So yeah. that's, that's what. Yeah. But there is, a, you know, one brilliant thing that Marcus made through Sire Basses is, you know, that I think made Sire distinctive, you know, made Sire different from the other brands, even with its low price, is about the mid-sweep knob. <laughs> And, and, and the funny thing is that when Jocko introduced me to the bass, the, I don't like, up until I started dealing with sires, I never had mid-range on my basses. Okay. I never, I, well, I've had it. I've had it on a few basses through the years, but I never liked it. I never used it. Okay. I like, I, like on my custom instruments, I just have bass and shovel. No mid range, and and I like Sadowski preamps because it's just boost only. It's a two band, yeah, two band preamp. Yeah, I, I, and I like that. I had to get used to. So I probably played my first sire for six months, almost a year before I ever touched the mid range knob. And the only reason I I <coughs> messed with the mid range was because I was doing a session in the studio and we were trying to get a different sound. Yeah. And I was just like, oh yeah, let me see what this knob does. <laughs> but it's just, I, and it's just because mid range is a funny frequency. Yeah. To me, it, it's very delicate, and people, you can, you know, I like that whole Jaco Fastoria sound that I grew yeah. up on. That yeah. I used to try to play like that. But um, it can get overwhelming. And so I, I've never liked mid-range. Now I've learned how to use the mid-range more effectively, but I rarely boost it. I usually cut it. Okay. You know, you know just to give it a, you know, just to take a little, <laughs> find the bands that don't overlap. Because mid-range overlaps on the high end and on the low end. Yeah. For clarity, sometimes if you take a little mid-range out, it gets clear. Yeah. And that's what I like a very clear bass sound. So 
Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And uh, what do you think about now? Now you know, as as you as we know that Sire has lots of line right now. You know, uh, the upcoming D5 and P5. You know, I order like 13 bases of that for my new customers, okay. and and I really can't wait about trying those passive precision. I I, I, I uh, Vujani Wakaba has uh, what is it, the U5 the the passive yeah. ones? PJ U5. I don't, have, I don't have the passive one yet. But I played his, and I really mm. like that. Yeah. You know and what? I can't. Yeah. For the P base, you know the yeah. P base that's coming. I yeah, I've already told. Yeah, I need one of those. <laughs> you know what? The the U five is really a different piece. The to be honest with you, will because it has mm-hmm. the the jazz the jazz pickup. It's it has like kind of seventies vibe. It's closer yeah. to the bridge. And then yeah, yeah. The, the sound, the maple sound, you know, the maple sound is really has a, that vintage vibe, surprisingly. Right. It's really right. nice and punchy. It's short scale, 30 inch, but it's very punchy. Yeah, for... yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to getting one. Um, you should get one. Because, I, I, you know, that's a sound that, that's really becoming popular these yeah. days. So, yeah. you know, some flat wounds on it. Yeah, yeah, flat one. But sometimes, you know, 30 inch scale is sometimes too short for me. You know, the, the block is yeah. like smaller. Yeah. And then right. I don't know with the guy with bigger hands, bigger fingers. Yeah. I got big hands. So, <laughs> what do you think you know, about I play upright too. So, it's okay. Like, yeah. You know, do, do, but... do you think it's going to be comfortable for your big, big fingers? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I don't really have problem. I have another short scale bass. Mm-hmm. Um, that I played for years that um, just some cheap bass that I picked up and I've never really had a problem. I had to focus a little bit more, but not a big problem. Okay. Big problem. That's a good news. So uh, is there any chance for you if, if, you know, the good thing about Sire is that Sire always, always listen to their customers. You know, if you pay attention to the, the M series, you know, the M series, there is a, like the first, all the first generation mostly so the lower cut cut away the lower cut away is like it's mm-hmm. not closer to the 24th fret and yeah, i don't know that, maybe you not you don't you don't have you that, right? yeah you don't have that problem but i had that i have that problem and some indonesian bassists are having the same problem with accessing yeah. the 24th fret when they play higher right. in the higher register right. and then yeah and then we then we felt that oh no the lower cut away should be cut deeper to the mm-hmm. 24th fret. And then I told uh, Kyle, I told Kyle, mm-hmm. Kyle, it's just my input. I don't know if you could work it out or, and then surprisingly, Kyle listened and he acted so fast. And then he gave me the, you know, the blueprint of the new M series with the lower cutaway, better, mm-hmm. much better. Now the second yeah, generation yeah. that you have. I thought, I was like, you did that. I remember <laughs> that. That was you. It's amazing. No, they do listen. They do listen. Yeah. And that is unique. Um, one of the reasons that I like working with them yeah. as a company yeah. is because they actually listen to their customers. Yeah. They listen to their endorsers. They ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, they even send, like they have, like with the electronics, they ask a lot of questions. They're yeah. doing some different things. So even um, I think that there are some things where they're even doing more as far as incorporating the people that they work with in research and development, which I'm happy to do. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. It's, it's a good thing. Most companies, most they, don't companies, ask most, <laughs> they don't even ask yeah. their endorses. Huh? <laughs> you know, the, the, trust me, I have other endorsements. They've never, I, I have trouble getting them to answer the phone sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, but yeah. That's that's why you know I still keep um, uh, selling, and then you know there's no contract with me, no no written contract. But that, but you know, if you check my YouTube, I always reviewed uh, the the sire bases, much many contents of the sire bases because I love them, okay. simply love them. Just, yeah, they, they, not, they are yeah. excellent instruments, and I've been playing for over thirty four years now, and I have to say that. I've never seen a, a commercial, a factory produced instrument yeah. as consistent. Yeah. And, you know, even like you were saying that some people were complaining that the V10 and uh, the V series, the V10s are expensive. 
Yeah. But if you put them right next to their equivalents, they're still a thousand dollars cheaper. Like you can't buy a Sadowski Metro. A Sadowski Metro is a thousand dollars more than that, yeah. a Sire V2. The, 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 the Japanese know? made. <clears throat> yeah. And, and I've had both, and it's not a thousand dollars different. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. I believe you because I tried some. Yeah, that's yeah. the interesting part. Now, what do you think if there is a chance for you to make a an, an input about new series? What what kind of new series that you want them to make? Ooh, I, <laughs> actually, I thought about this. I would like to have a jazz bass, so like a vintage V7 <laughs> or V7 with the M7 pickups. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants that, you know, Will. Yeah, with the dual coil switching. It took me a minute to get used to it. But yeah, yeah. I, I like the difference in the sound. It's different. Yeah, and then and then also personally, I would like, now that they're making a P-Bass, they don't make a five string with the single pickup, like uh -huh. the old 51 style jazz. I would like to see a five string with just one pickup. Like, okay. but in the P bass position. Okay. Or just like a single coil, you know, like just a single. And that's just a thing I like. So, uh, is that different with the D5, the upcoming D5, with the only one pickup? The D5, they have one that has like that, that, that's like that, but it's a four string. <laughs> yeah. Or you, you need five version. Yeah, I want five. <laughs> <laughs> We all need a low B now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting sound. Yeah. It's an interesting sound. It's a it's a very interesting sound. So, yeah, it's interesting. Well, uh, uh, we can't wait for the new P5 and D5. I, I think it's gonna be booming again. You know, it's gonna right. change the game of the precision world. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay, uh, now, now tell us about you know uh, well, your upcoming project. I heard that you're working on your solo album or or well, your originals. So. Basically, the other thing that I do as a musician is I produce and write music. Okay. And I've been doing that for many, many years, mm -hmm. for 25 years. I write music for commercials. I play on commercials, but I also compose. I have written music for industrial film. I've, you know, done all of this stuff. And I do production for other people for, for years and years and years. I... The Will Groove 2 thing is my production company. We do beats, you know, we do all of that stuff. Music for libraries and things like that. But I've never really wanted to be an artist. I don't like, it's, it's a, there's a lot to being an artist. You have to do interviews, which like this, I don't mind. This is great. Um, but you have to promote yourself. Yeah. And I, I don't really like, like talking about myself like that that much. You know, it's <laughs> like, I, I just want to put music out and just let it be out there. Okay. But when the pandemic started, and over the years, I've released music here and there. Like, just, ah, let me put something out on SoundCloud. Let me do this, do that. When the pandemic hit, all my work went away. So I had mm. tours scheduled. I had a bunch. I was going to have a for 2020. And I sat around depressed for about a month. And then I was like, well, what makes me, what actually makes me happy? Making music. So I just went back to some old music that I had done and just polished it up. I have new equipment and made it sound a little better. And I was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. Let's do another one. Then I got the idea of collaborating with a lot of friends that I've made through the years. And we're all sitting at home. Everybody started getting equipment at home to work. So I decided, hey, well, I should ask my friend Felton to play guitar on this. Or my friend Ben Johnson, who's a great drummer who lives in Atlanta now. Um, hey, play drums on this. And for a lot of this, and Sam Hankins and Audley Reed and Tim Cunningham and a lot of people that I've worked with through the years, like, hey, just Could you play on this? And they were, everybody was like, yeah, I'm not doing, you know, everybody was like, yeah, yeah. So it, they started sending it to me and I was just like, okay, I finished this, I'll put it out. A few weeks later, I'll put it out. And so now I'm, 
maybe eight or 10. I, I have maybe 15 completed songs, but maybe eight or 10 of them are kind of related. So I've been putting them out on my Bandcamp page and I'm going to package it together and put it out on iTunes and uh, for streaming a little bit later. But I just wanted to introduce the concept of me being a solo artist by Bandcamp first, you know, just because I had more, uh, I had more control. So, but well, the whole artist thing, I'm not, you know, it is what it is. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, is there any, uh, if you don't mind, you could uh, share to us uh, your approach in making music. Is there any special approach you made before, you know? I mean, I, so like making this bass orientated music, I'm a composer. So the bass is a part of my composition, but it's not necessarily always the uh, out thing base oriented so, yeah yeah but now I've, i've definitely done songs that are bass orientated i always solo i'm always playing the solo or the melody on some of the songs um but i also like to showcase my guest artists yeah you know so i i want music that more than just bass players will enjoy that's my goal mm -hmm. is that i want music that everybody enjoys yeah as opposed to Yes, I because I, I love all of that music, all the stuff that Marcus does, Victor Wooten, uh, Victor Bailey, it's a big influence on me. All these people, I listen to all that stuff and I love it, but I I have my own voice yeah. and my own voice is a little different. So, you know, I can stretch out when I need to stretch out, but I like people to, I like people to hear the music and just like it yeah, and not go, oh, what a great bass part you know, and something like that. So, you know, it's music for the people. That's what I got. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, can't wait for your uh, more new songs, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it might be a, it might be the last question, but we could improv always improvise. Uh, there is a, you know, every people, you know, every guest that I've uh, asked uh, has uh, suffered greatly for the, for this uh, crisis that happens yeah. in the world. And I want to know what your thought is about the music business that I think is a bit changing now these days before the COVID and now after the COVID for you personally and for, for the music business there in the Chicago or US in general. What do you think about that? Okay. Well, for me personally, like I said, I had in 2020, this time last year, as everything was getting canceled. And so I had, uh, I was going to go in, to Europe and tour. Wow. I was going to play all around the United States. I was also going to play all around Chicago because I work a lot. Um, all of that shut down. And so literally, I've been playing professionally since I was 18. Wow. And I'm 50-something. I, I never tell my <laughs> But I literally have never, like, last, I didn't play, my last gig last year was March the 10th. I didn't play another gig until June. Mm -hmm. And that was the longest I had not played a gig in my entire life. Um, besides the financial hit, it also made me kind of have to reorientate my life because yeah. so much of my life was going out and playing gigs and moving around and being busy. And so I had to change all of that. But after taking about a month just to kind of mope around, I remembered that I'm a musician. So there are all these other things that I know how to do. So I, I'm still teach, you know, mm -hmm. I'm teach, I teach using Zoom. Uh, I teach, I have a, what I call my musical day job. I work with uh, an organization called Urban Gateways where we teach um, cultural enrichment programs to children. Yeah. And, This year, we figured out how to do it on Zoom. So that continued to a, to a lesser degree than normal. But, you know, there are other things. There, I've participated in streaming concerts. I've done like two of those. Um, I'd like to do more of that. Um, we're playing, we're starting to play a little bit here and there. Uh, the churches have started up, so I've done a little bit of that. And I do a lot of remote recording. That's mainly what I do. And then I've always been an engineer. I've always mixed records. I learned how to master records. Mm -hmm. 
So now that's a big component of what I've been doing. I've been mixing and mastering other people's material. And it's yeah. something that I want to, I've, you know, I've made investment in new gear. I've, I've made investment in time and learning something new. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's more, for me, it's more about adding things and not worrying about what you're not doing Okay. and just adding new things. But COVID is, it's rough. It's yeah, rough. it's rough. Yeah. It's tough. It's rough, man. But hopefully coming out of it, I'll make, personally, I'll make better decisions uh, as a community. We just need to, the thing is now we understand how much music means to other people. Yeah. Because everybody was locked in the house and they were watching people do DJ sets and concerts and all of this other stuff. So now music is important. Now, the thing is, as musicians and creatives and, and, and content creators, we need to be benefiting from all of that so that we can make a living. Yeah. And, and I think that that's one of the main things that we need to examine and change. Now that's interesting. The, the the one part that you mentioned is about teaching. Now, nowadays, you know, uh, information era is all all things are changing because it's very easy for people to learn new materials or even to get lesson base lesson, let's say, in internet yeah. freely without without charge. You know, in YouTube. Yeah. Now, as you as a teacher, you should we as a, we as a teacher, you know, we should bring something new that people won't get freely in the internet, right? What, what's your right. approach about teaching in this new era for students? Well, I, I basically, I lean heavy into teaching actual theory. Okay. So I teach music as much as I teach bass. Mm. Um, the difference with Zoom is that I can, like, one of the things when I'm sitting down with somebody one-on-one -on -one in real life, I barely play bass. I play keyboards. I explain to you how what you're playing on bass works in the music. Okay. And now, you know, now correct technique or I'll help you learn something. But my emphasis is really on making better musicians, you know, be musicianship. Now, it, it, so the biggest change is that I'm not sitting across from you, but I've learned to ask questions. So I have very distinct questions that I ask players, uh, especially about what their goals are. I try to introduce you to different music. We try to, and always to, to let you understand how your approach is the same, but it changes because the role of the bass changes in each genre of music you use. But your technique should be the same. Your musicianship should be the same. All of these things, all the fundamentals are things that you can take in anything that you're doing. So that's why I emphasize fundamentals really strong. Okay, so you so you think there's still always a, a room for us teacher to teach something that they don't find in YouTube, right? Let's say like right. that, right? Well, because it's more individual. YouTube is just whoever comes along, mm -hmm. they get what they can get. But you're not. But most YouTubers are not going to change for you as an individual unless you sign up for a private lesson. Yeah, and. I, and I, I have to admit that out of curiosity, I have signed up and taken, you know, a couple of lessons myself. Because as a teacher, I'm always a student. Yeah. So I've taken I've taken lessons from a couple of people just to see what their approach was. Uh -huh. and, and it's very interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting. Because a lot of times it's like, I'll, I'll pretend I don't know how to play the bass. <laughs> or I, don't, I, I have no experience. And it's interesting what people will teach you, mm -hmm. you know, to keep you coming back. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I should do that trick then here. <laughs> right. It works. <laughs> yeah. It's very nice. Thank you. So, okay, Will, uh, I think, you know, I'm not going to hold you for a longer time because, you know, yours is, is almost at noon, right? You, I don't know if you almost. have. Almost. Yeah, I got to I, 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 I got to meet. I was. Yeah, I gotta end up my day with sleeping. You just start your day, so I'm stealing your time right. here. <laughs> on the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, on the other. But coast. I like this. I I love the technology that allows us to talk. Yeah, yeah. You're you're in the Philippines. I'm Indonesia. Yeah, I'm in Chicago. 
I love this. This is yeah. the, this, the world is coming together. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it. a really interesting uh, fact. And you know what? Uh, the only did you uh, let's let's uh, before we end this. I remember about the second factory that Sire has. Uh, they have second factory in China, and then they closed it. Right? Yeah. So speaking of Indonesia, is the main factory now. Now, oh, no. So what yeah. You told me it was a quality control issue yeah. among others. Yeah. And yeah. I like the fact that they're very committed to quality control. Yeah. Yeah. That that part is now making some people orders. You know, you you know some people's orders are like very long. It took very long. My order is going to be like at least four or five months. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's very difficult to yeah, get stuff. I mean, yeah. Cause, cause they don't make, they make them in smaller batches. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, it takes longer. To, I mean, you as a dealer, I can imagine people are like, where's my base? Where's yeah, my base? Where's my base? I paid the base. But um, at the end of the day, if you have to wait a little longer, to get a better instrument, I would recommend it. Um, <coughs> and trust me, I've had three custom bases made. One took 13 months. Yeah. Was, you know, so it depends on what your level of patience is. You know, I mean, just go go buy a Squire if you don't want to wait. <laughs> <laughs> go buy Squires and modify it. It's called Squire, right, Modified right. Squire, you know. <laughs> What you get <laughs> yeah yeah i know so we uh, we well we hope that uh, you know the factory goes faster because of the pandemic as well they, they say the the factory manager told me that the pandemic make, makes it worse you know oh yeah it makes it longer the they, they've waited for the parts they might mm -hmm. have some parts that ca came from you know united states maybe the woods yeah the wood, or, yeah. Or may, you know, maybe some parts i don't know uh detailed about that but yeah That made me yeah, and, and then and then there's the shipping. I don't know how. Well, you're in Indonesia, so they don't have to ship it to you. I mean, let's bring it to you. But as far as the state, as far yeah. as you, you, it's the shipping also. Yeah. Some when Sire first came out, there was a, a wait because there was an issue mm -hmm. at the port. There was some type of strike, so it took forever for the bases to actually get here, clear customs, and get unloaded because they were having a strike. Yeah. So, you know, supply chain. Supply chain. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the woods uh, and the materials of sire, as I know, they 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 use the ma Indonesian mahogany because we have lots of mahogany woods okay. here. But I think they was... they said that they use the American ash and alder from America. Then I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. that's where it all comes from, and I think that's just for consistency. Ah. Uh, okay. You know, Because that, that's the other thing. I'd love for them to do a swamp ash base mm -hmm. that's lighter. Yeah. Uh, my V10 is very light. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd love to see like a swamp ash. But swamp ash is actually getting kind of rare. So a lot of companies are, are moving away from that. So. Yeah. Uh, another thing is that, that there is a, a, some consensus with, you know, some people in the social media about the P10 and V10, they think that, okay, in that price range, we could get lots of used, uh, nice brands, you know, yeah. nice established brands. But then, sure. but we don't mind about V10 because P10 and V10, they use the roasted uh, roasted neck, which right. is awesome. I, I, I tried the V10 and it's awesome, you know, the neck feels, the, the sound uh, coming out of the roasted neck is something else. It's not, same it's not the same like the other v you know but then uh, do you agree if some people uh say that you should put you know better dryer tuning packs you should put better bridges you know like say like you know hip shot bridge or I, i've never had a problem with my bridge or tuners uh the tuners on the v10 are upgraded the bridge mm. is high man you know like to me it's 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 all higher quality now you could outsource um a bridge and tuners you could uh, like you could offer a hip shot stuff yeah but then the price is gonna go up yeah and you know you you can only and then there is the idea that the consistency might change 
Mm. You know, like hopefully you're getting the best stuff from hip shot or the best stuff. But I think that the pricing that that's where I mean, I like my V10 has um, silver hardware. I actually don't like silver hardware and all my okay. sires have silver hardware. Uh, I would love to have black hardware. Except the knobs, the black uh, knobs are black, right? Yeah, but I would like to have uh, black hardware, yeah. but I'm willing to, but I'm willing to, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. If, you know, as long as it works. Yeah. So, but, I mean, and those are other options, but at the high, at the higher end, just like I said, um, using the car analogy, you're paying for all of that. You know, if you get a Mercedes Benz with yeah. heated, um, heated seats and, um, rear view mirrors mm -hmm. you pay for it you pay, for, not, it. pay for it <laughs> there is a price for it there's price for it yeah you yeah know? i agree you know yeah. but the quality is the same and that's the, the most important the most important things are aesthetics i don't care i you know i have a v9 i have a v10 they're really nice looking yeah i'm basic <laughs> you know Uh, you know, I don't beat up my basses, but I'm basic. I like, you know, just regular looking instruments. So <laughs> they sound really good. Okay. Yeah. Well, well thank you. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I think I'm going to you know, let you go now. Uh, before All right. I, I go with, you know, my other questions, <laughs> unending questions for you. All right. But uh, uh, let's just uh, wish the, the best for you and me and people for there sure. in, in the United States. With the right. vaccines thing, and then the sire as well. That you know, when when sire goes up, and we we all well, we're also happy, you know, as you're the first uh, like supporter, and I, I'm I'm one of them here in Indonesia as well. When there are no okay. people trying dare to try new brands here, people here in right. Indonesia just like you know, they know fenders, they know MTDs, they know F base, right. but they're afraid to try new things. I mean, that, that's the thing is that um, although there have been several new brands yeah. that have come out. I mean, you know, I live in Chicago, so I'm familiar with Lakelands. Yeah. Um, uh, base mods. Yeah. But Sire has definitely shaken up yeah. what expectations are of a quality instrument, you know. And then I also want to mention that um, I also use Gensler amplification mm -hmm. and SIT strings. So I'm also affiliated with those companies and I've, you know, all together, that's when my sound is great. I just need gigs now. <laughs> <laughs> We all need well, gigs. We all need yeah. gigs now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Will, thank you so much for being here in this Groove Talk program. Uh, all right. Hope, hope we can it. talk to, uh, to each other soon and, you know, waiting for the new series that Sire makes. Hopefully soon, mm -hmm. because uh, I heard that Kyle is going to make the third generation. You should tell me about that oh. <laughs> privately. <laughs> I, I know a little, but I can't tell. <laughs> yeah, I know a tiny bit. You know how Kyle is. He, Mr. Kim, he, it's like when he tells you it's already done. Like, you know, he was like, okay. oh, this is this. And I'm like, wait, what? Okay, <laughs> you know? okay, okay. But you like know, a little, a little, you know, insight. Uh, the good news is here, right? right what, what's happening here right now in Indonesia, Will, it's a, surprisingly because many, uh, many senior musicians, let's say guitarists, uh, even drummers, mostly bassists now are being endorsed by local dealers, sire, local sire dealers. Oh, cool. now, 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 sire, yeah, sire brand is really getting more, uh, you know, getting stronger here locally. But oh, then, yeah, I remember when 2015, when it first came out, there is no one, you know, holding Sire except me and maybe one or two persons in, in Indonesia. Uh -oh. And then now, wow. nowadays, we see this brand is growing so fast. And with the new fans, even in Indonesia, now many dealers now here in Indonesia sell Sire okay. bases. <laughs> so good. it's really nice to really see this company growing. Uh, yeah. before our eyes yeah right and yeah. And, and but it, it's still they're still maintaining their consistency hopefully yeah hopefully but then we have to wait longer for our orders now then <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right thank you will thank
Thank you guys for uh, for uh, uh, watching this program with my friend from Chicago, United States of America. Uh, I'm gonna let you go, and hopefully you have a stay stay healthy there, and hope you get your gigs back more and more. I got my first vaccination shot yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Will. All Happy right. to have you. Thank you. God bless. All right.